Okay, welcome to Golden Wings Report. Uh, here we are in this beautiful Panama with all this landscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah that is really great. Uh, well, here, here I have by my side a huge DJ, a huge producer, someone that I really have esteem for him. Um, it's Olivier Mathieu, best known as Rodriguez Jr. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Enjoying Panama, enjoying the view. And uh, yeah, very pleased to meet you and uh, yeah, to talk with you now. Bueno, dice que está muy contento de estar aquí en Panamá con esta gran vista y que bueno, que ha sido un placer conocernos. Eh, tuve el, el agrado de, de ayer poder tocar con él, hacerle el warm up en, en una noche bastante interesante en, en Villa Agustina. It was a pretty interesting night, right? It was nice, yeah, it was it was my first time in Panama, so it was challenging because I had to understand how does it work. I mean, and did you? yeah, I love <laughs> it. I loved it, and uh, yeah, the first hour was kind of epic. I had to find a good way to do it, but finally it was okay, and uh, yeah, we had a good fun. I think. Huh? What do you think? It was okay. Huh? I, I really love it. Uh, I had like an amazing time. Uh, as I already told you, I, I canceled my other gigs just to be there with you and to wow. do the warm up. I feel guilty now. Well, you have to. <laughs> you have to actually. Now you owe me a lot of money. <laughs> Eh, bueno, le estaba diciendo que mm, me estaba comentando que fue una noche bastante extraña, que terminó muy bien por suerte y, y la verdad que fue un placer haber podido abrirle, abrirle a este lugar tan, tan divertido que fue Villa Guay. label uh, it's based in Germany right yeah it's based in Berlin yeah, yeah in Berlin. Uh, how do you manage like all, all the things that you have to do for the label it's like walking the tracks playing like produce like everything how do you manage your time me estaba preguntando cómo maneja su tiempo entre el sello entre tocar eh, el manejo las producciones y también la familia and also the family yeah that's very easy huh? that's really the, the I wake up on Monday morning at 7 I bring my daughter to school, then I go to the studio, and that's, that's it every day, from Monday to Thursday. And, uh, and then I travel around from Friday to Sunday, so that's quite, it's quite easy. It's all about the balance. And, um, yeah, I think that's quite okay. It's quite easy to do everything at the same time. You just have to find a good workflow and a good, a good way to schedule everything. Dice que, bueno, que él tiene una vida totalmente normal, que se levanta a las 7 de la mañana para llevar a su hija al colegio, y después es simplemente trabajar los fines de semana desde el viernes hasta el domingo viajando y bueno después seguir con, con el flujo well the bad well not the bad the, the important part is to, to find someone that that can help you right like your wife that it's not easy to be the wife of a DJ right I know you should ask my you, you should ask my wife maybe we can, we can call her no that I think yeah of course that's not easy but that's, you always have to To meet the good persons. I mean, it's whatever you do in your life, you have to be surrounded by the good persons. You have to choose the good person and to meet the good person. So that, that's the same. But uh, yeah, I mean, we try to trust each other, and that's quite easy in the end. You know, yeah, you have bad sides and good sides, and once again, it's all, all about reaching the good balance. Okay, well, but how it was at the the first years? It was not that easy. Oh, is, is G jealous or not? Oh, but when we met, I was already touring. I was already in DJ, so it was part of the it was part of the game since the beginning. So she she had to get into it anyway. Le dije que también es muy importante tener a alguien al lado que te que te soporte en todo esto. Entonces me estaba comentando que él conoció a su mujer cuando yo estaba en tour, cuando yo estaba en todo este tema de la música. Entonces mientras esté la confianza, eh, todo lo demás es posible. Well, tell us something. Uh, about the gigs, uh, your best place, your best crowd, like people that surprised you. Le estaba preguntando cuáles fueron eh, los mejores lugares donde tocó, el, el mejor público y qué cosas lo, lo han sorprendido. That's always a difficult question because, you know, each crowd is so different. This crowd is, each crowd is so, uh, you know, they don't react the same way, they don't have the same way to, uh, to understand and to listen to the music. So that's very difficult to tell one place uh, which could be better, you know. Um, I like to travel and I like to meet new people, new crowds. Um, 
I mean, yesterday, for instance, was very, uh, very interesting because, yeah, I can tell you, I, I had to understand the way, um, the way he liked it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's that's impossible to tell this kind of question. Honestly, I love, I love every country. Um, yeah, I love to play in Germany. I love to play in Spain because they are like playing hard. I like to play in, in Scotland because it gets crazy. I love to play in Mexico because it's muy caliente. So it, every country is different and interesting in a way. Me estaba diciendo que cada público es distinto, cada ciudad es distinta, entonces es muy difícil contestar esa pregunta. Eh, México tiene sus cosas, Escocia, Inglaterra, Francia, España, todos, todos los lugares son distintos. Or si puede llegar a improvisar en los sets. I, I have some some kind of, of track list because I play only my own tracks or remixes I did. So I have some kind of oh. track list. Yeah, yeah. But I can sometimes I can um, skip track. I can play a track from the end in the beginning. I can you know kind of mess it up. But I still play always my own material. So that's yeah. always the same material in a way. Uh, This is why I have to produce always new tracks, otherwise it could be boring huh? after a while. And then I try to, um, to to allow me to improvise as much as I can. The beats, for instance, of the rhythm, I can program, pro program all the beats live. You know, I have this controller and I can hit the pads and then it loop and I can improvise my beats live depending on the reaction of the crowd. So I can play harder or deeper, I can play more harsh or, uh, you know, I can improvise quite a lot. Uh, I can add effects, I can play the keyboard as well when it works. <laughs> yesterday it was fucked up. Uh, so I can, I can do quite a lot of things actually. Uh, and the most important I think when you play live is to interact with the people. You know, that's, you have the freedom to, to launch events whenever you like. You know, it's not something different than, than the gym. Bueno, le, me estaba contando de que él solamente toca con los tracks propios. Entonces, sí puede ir mutando el orden de los tracks y también con el machine va haciendo nuevos beats dentro del set. Entonces, según cómo está la gente, va hacia un lado o va hacia otro lado. At least. Tell us something about how do you produce and how do you play. Which hard work or what do you do? What do you use? In the studio, you mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I saw it, but people, yeah. but they didn't. When, when I play live, that's quite a basic setup, but uh, that's a basic setup which allows me to, to improvise and which is easy to travel with. That's the most important. You know what I am talking about. <laughs> so I have basically a computer running a button live. Um, I use the machine as a controller. I also use an, an, an iPad uh, with touch AC. Touch AC, yeah. That's great because you can design your own layout depending on your needs. Yeah, well, I, I used to work with, uh, but, well, just with my cell phone. Oh, it, yeah, well, it's a phone. It works as well. Yeah, it works as well. It works as well. And that's nice because you can, I mean, if you get wasted, you can even yeah. go to the, to the, with the crowd and autopilot your, uh, yeah, your yeah, life set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's kind of funny. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's it. And then I have sometimes uh, a walking keyboard to, to play uh, some chords. Dice que para tocar live está primero que todo tiene que ser portable, tiene que ser fácil de transportar. Entonces eh, toca con la Mac, eh, con el machine, con un keyboard. Eh, a veces, bueno, tiene también el iPad con el Touch OSC eh, que también se lo puede dar a la gente para jugar y si no también un, un keyboard para, para ir moviéndolo. And it, well, it's, it's really great when you can introduce people to your music as like, okay, well, touch here and move something. That, that's very funny. It, How do you manage that? It, do you have like an, an anecdote or something that someone got crazy? Like, yeah. I've got some anecdotes, yeah. But back in the days, I had this. Um, I had a guitar, you know, that's like a, like a guitar with a K. Yeah, well, and that I was used pretty 80s. Yeah, it was very 80s, kind of cheesy, but I loved it. <laughs> it was very Jean Michel Jean, by the way. <laughs> and I had I had it for a couple of years uh, with a very long, um, very long cable, so I was able to go in the crowd as well. And a couple of times, I just wasted guys just 
tried to push it and to play on the keys yeah. and it was like a disaster. <laughs> so, um, yeah, also I had this guy, like, on the guitar, so yeah, oh. a lot of, yeah, a lot of disasters. But I think that disasters are probably part of the fun as well yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, people kind of like it. I do, I like, I like to have this kind of like, bueno, le preguntaba si, ya que, que así interactúa la gente y le estaba dando la posibilidad de tocar, si le había pasado algo, dice que sí, que la gente a veces que se pone totalmente loca y están borrachos golpeando el teclado hasta que hubo que desenchufarlo para poder salvar esa situación. Tell me something that, I don't know, like in a weird country, something that weird happened. Like, for example, the one that I told you about Roberto Cavalli with the president. Yeah, so something like that. Le, le, le decía que nos cuente alguna anécdota interesante de algún viaje o algo así que sea totalmente increíble. Being of such shit, and sometimes that's really, uh, sometimes that's also a lot of disasters, huh? because that's obviously never the good persons, that's never the good crowd, and uh, that's always challenging. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I remember, I mean, I'm traveling for 10 years now, so that's kind of difficult to say. This one. Uh, Did you been to Japan? I've been to Japan, but I never had any bad experiences there. Japan is always great. I mean, you always have these very serious people coming yeah. to the club, and after one hour, they're like, ah, all wasted. And Japan is always kind of extreme, and they are so into music that, uh, you know, I never had any wrong experiences there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, in Asia, yeah, I've got a lot of crazy, uh, crazy thing in Bangkok. In Bangkok, I played for the, for the French embassy, and for some reason, while I was playing, I had this guy on stage doing some kind of sketches, comic things, you know, yeah. and he was jumping around and bullshitting, and it was part of the show actually, yeah. at some point he was jumping so much that he jumped on my computer and on, on the keyboard and everything just like, whoosh, everything just like moved away or and then the music stopped and it was, yeah, it was one of the disasters I have. Uh, while while it. No, because it was so funny that I basically laughed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, but I, I have a lot of story. Maybe I could write a book, uh, write a book someday. Yeah. Well, le preguntaba acerca de esas anécdotas divertidas que, que a veces pasan y me dice que la gente, bueno, en Japón es muy respetuosa, pero que en Bangkok le pasó que una persona estaba haciendo como dibujos, estaba saltando y dando vueltas, y en un momento pegó un salto y cayó en el teclado. Entonces le pregunté si lo quería matar, y me dice que no, no, simplemente que se empezó a reír muchísimo. How do you deal with, I don't know, For example, yesterday we had like two bottles of rum there. How do you manage not to be that wasted when you're playing? I mean, like you, I drink a lot of water, and uh, it depends on the mood. Sometimes I am wasted, <laughs> but don't tell anybody. Huh? <laughs> no, sometimes I just... No, yesterday was okay, because I'm just come com from this vacation in Mexico, so I'm, I'm still quite relaxed and very quiet, you know? But I can get twisted sometimes, I, as everybody, I guess. Yeah, and also I get you like a couple of bottles of water. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That That's good. the trick, yeah. That's the trick. Yeah. One bottle of rum, two bottles of water. You have to find a good balance. Yeah, more bottles of water. <risa> le pregunté cómo es que manejaba este tipo todo el tema de los excesos por ejemplo de alcohol que allá nos 